Yo, what's going on guys? Arix here. Welcome back to another video for Elden Ring. And today, I want to put together a handy list of tips, secrets, things you might not know about the game. However, this list has been a collaboration with you guys. We put out a tweet the other day and also a YouTube community post basically saying, what things do you know that you think other people should know? They can be secrets, they can be tips, they can be things that are maybe not that obvious, but have helped you along your way. So we've picked 14 awesome tips for this video. Of course, there are plenty that were submitted. If you guys want to check out those posts, by all means do so, or we might do a follow-up video if you guys enjoy this. But for the time being, let's get started. Don't forget to drop a like if you find these helpful. Let me know in the comments down below if there are any more that you think people should know about. And of course, don't forget to keep it locked for plenty more Elden Ring. So kicking off with some tips from Nikolai Bolton, he's actually compiled quite a few into this one, so I thought I'd run through these because these are some rather interesting interactions. First things first, lightning incantations will actually do more damage when it's raining, which of course, you know, makes a lot of sense, but it's one of those things you don't always consider, so uh, I guess if you do want to do maximal damage with lightning, maybe try and check the weather forecast beforehand. This also applies to fire incantations, only they do less damage when it's raining. It's also worth noting if you happen to be going to an area where you need to go through lava faster, thinking about one of the dungeons, then if you use Quick Step, you can travel through lava faster. I will say this next one, I couldn't actually get it to work. So if you guys can offer any further insight in the comments down below, that would be super appreciated. Apparently, Poison Mist will not aggro enemies if you are being stealthy. Now, I did put on the stealthy armor, I crouch walked, I tried my very best, but no matter what I did, I couldn't get them to not aggro. So maybe I'm doing something wrong. Either way, didn't quite get that one. And of course, strike weapons, yes, they do more damage to certain enemy types. One of the most obvious ones are, of course, the Crystallian enemies, the bosses. If you go and take striking weapon types to them, they will, of course, shatter to pieces. Moving on from there to the next set of tips. I did say 14, technically speaking. Some of you guys provided a couple, but I've done this by submissions. Tyson Hill gave us two tips. The first one, of course, is incredibly handy and something I haven't been doing for a very long time, literally until the end of the game. Of course, when you open the map, if you press triangle or wire, it pulls up a list of graces. And if you then press R3 on a site of grace, when the list is up, you can mark it as your favorite. So if there are places you regularly return to, like the round table hold, then setting them as your favorites means that you can then very quickly go and tab over to that list without having to go scrolling trying to find things. Additionally, as a second note, if you two-hand your empty offhand while either on foot or on torrent, you can actually sheath your weapon, which is pretty neat. Kind of cool for screenshots. Tip number three coming from Johnny Vanguard. Super useful one, of course, if you do happen to have lots of items in your inventory and, of course, you're scrolling through, you really need something, then if you hold down on the D-pad, it does, of course, say double tap here, but it is actually a hold. If you hold down on the D-pad, it will then return you to whatever is in your first slot. Keep in mind, it's not necessarily always going to be a potion, unless, of course, your potions are always in the first slot, which I think for most of you, they are. If you've moved them, I don't know what you're doing. But anyway, whatever is in your first slot in your inventory, if you hold down the D-pad, you will automatically switch back to that, which can be mighty handy if you're in the middle of a boss fight and you, of course, need to get something quickly. Then the next tip comes from Cowslayer. He says you can cancel the charged R2 attacks of some weapon classes, curved swords, for example, thrusting and heavy thrusting swords with a dodge, and you'll actually do a unique backstep slash, which is pretty awesome. Then the next tip comes from Miguel Munoz, and this one is basically about casting either spells, incantations, or using summons that maybe you don't necessarily have FP for. If you have not spec too heavily into mind, and some of the ones you want to use have a very high FP requirement above what you have, if you actually use the Cerulean Hidden Tier, which of course you mix in your Wondrous Physic Flask, this is the one that temporarily will eliminate all FP consumption costs, of course allowing you to infinitely cast, infinitely use weapon skills, things like that. This also applies for those. For example, in this situation, I cannot use this summon because it requires 124 FP and I have 87. However, if you use that, because of course it basically gives you infinite FP, that will also remove that cap. So basically for the duration of having that active, you effectively have as much FP as you could possibly need. And therefore you can see, I can now cast or summon that summon. And that would also apply to spells, incantations. If there are things you cannot use because you do not have enough FP, using this will basically remove that blocker. The next tip comes from Bill Blackford and he says that the Wakizashi Dagger can actually be power stanced with katanas to give you the dual katana moveset, which I think is fantastic. Of course, in this game, power stancing is typically done by equipping two of the same weapon type. It doesn't have to be the identical weapon itself, i.e. it doesn't have to be two each katana, but it does need to be, you know, two katana, two straight swords, two curved swords, etc. Then, of course, you use the L1 or LB button to do the power stance attacks. 
However, Wakizashi is a dagger, and Katana is of course a Katana, so by extension, normally you wouldn't be able to power stance, but Wakizashi is considered a small Katana, I guess, in that regards. So when you equip that, you still have the power stance combo, which is incredibly cool, but you have one dagger and one Katana. Now this next one, I really like this one as someone that loves, uh, you know, exploring, platforming, all that stuff. Red Hot Chica Pepper says, if you throw colored stones, you can tell if fall damage is lethal or not. If the stone breaks, the fall will kill you. If the stone does not break, then you can survive. The next tip comes from S and this is for walking mausoleums. Of course, if you guys have ever gone to uh, deal with them, you know that they can be uh, a little bit sort of aggravated at times when you're trying to clear off those skulls. However, S says that for any walking mausoleum that requires you to destroy skulls on its legs, go to the nearest site of grace and pass time until morning. And then when you go back to them, they will actually be asleep and you can simply chop away in peace without any retaliation. So that is pretty handy. Following on from there, Demetrius Beck said that if you are going up against the sort of flame chariots or the uh, fire breathers or the flamethrowers, whatever you want to call them, I'm not actually sure their official names, but if you run up to these and you jump on their back and you press R1 or RB, it will initiate a special animation where you basically stab in the hole in the top of the head, you will then detonate it or you will prime it for detonation, you then need to jump off, run away, and it will then a few moments later explode, also dealing damage to anything that is nearby. Speaking of flame chariots or those sort of things, the chariots that you find in the dungeons, the ones that will of course normally run you over, in select situations you can actually destroy these with pots that hang from the ceilings. One of the examples of course is in this dungeon, you do need to do a bit of a runaround, but once you get there, once you get to the end, of course you get to this raised platform, there are pots that are hanging from the ceiling. If you shoot these and you time it correctly, they will drop down, explode, and they will destroy the chariot. In this case, you'll also get a weapon out of it. For this next tip, this one is actually a pretty handy one for, uh, you know, general combat. Simply Majestic says that if you put an Ash of War on a secondary light weapon, like a dagger, and use it solely for that Ash of War, then you can very quickly swap to it during combat. So for example, if you put something like Bloodhound Step on a dagger, for a quick dagger, then if you're in situations where, say, you need to dodge an attack, what you can do is very quickly swap to it. Of course, being a light weapon, you can swap very fast, and you can then use this Ash of War to sort of dash around, reposition, and then go back to your primary weapon. So he gave the example, of course, if you're fighting Melania, then Bloodhound Step is really useful for sort of getting away from things. But as you can sort of see here, you can then go from your main primary weapon. Admittedly, this situation, I could, of course, put... Bloodhound Step on my primary weapon because it supports Ash of War, but imagine a situation where maybe I'm running something like Rivers of Blood or a unique weapon that doesn't allow me to change the Ash, then having an offhand dagger where you can basically just do this, swap to it, use the Ash of War, swap back, is mighty handy. Now this next one, I really, really like this one, comes from Little Mountain 90 He says that you can activate at least some shortcut elevators in the game by throwing yourself off the top of the shaft, and so long as your corpse hits the button in the center, the elevator will actually go up, so when you reload and respawn from the Sight of Grace, it should then be up, and you'll know if you've done this right, because it should actually start moving before the screen fades out. The example found here, of course, was uh, in Halleck Tree, where you can then basically hit the shortcut elevator button to basically uh, activate this ahead of time. Now this next one, I also really like this one. Super says, if you get into a tough spot with Torrent and you need to make a 180 degree turn, but you're afraid of his movement being enough to sort of slide you off the edge, you can pull out your Spyglass, which of course you can buy off Kale, and you can look around and it will enable Torrent and you to spin positions without having to actually move. So if you're trying to sort of uh, parkour your way up something really, really precisely, this is actually kind of hilarious.
Then this last one from Seda. Honestly, I wish I knew this much earlier. I have wasted so much time doing this, but if you are trying to sort of use your golden runes, you'll know that normally you go into your inventory, you consume one of them or consume a group of them, and it will then take you out of your inventory. Meanwhile, if you go and you put it into simple view, it will not close your inventory when you use these, so you can basically spam out and use as many as you want back to back. And then finally, last tip, this one didn't actually come from the comments, but this one I just thought I would mention as well, because of course, if we go back to the chariots, the ones that will typically run you over, if you use the Raptor of the Mist's Ash of War, you can quite simply just avoid all of these attacks. Raptor of the Mist, of course, the one where you press left trigger as you're about to be hit and you sort of disappear into these feathers. This basically means that this thing cannot kill you provided you time it correctly. So this thing, I mean, admittedly, you get it a little bit later in the game, but this basically makes all those chariots a walk in the park. So there you have it, there's a little rundown on a few different things that uh, you might not know about the game, a few secrets, tips, handy things like that. Again, massive shout out to everybody that submitted those. Again, if you guys do enjoy this and you want to see more of these videos, we can of course do a follow-up one, but for the time being, that is pretty much it. If you missed our recent upload, be sure to check out this video and keep it on the channel for plenty more.